Good evening. My name is Dave Rosenstein. I'm a member of Community Board 8 and your host for tonight's show. Well, our first guest is David Menegon. David has been a public member of the Community Board's Transportation Committee before his April appointment. In September, David will retire as a full colonel in the U.S. Army Reserves after 30 years of service. As a member of its Civil Affairs Unit, he served two tours in Iraq. He has been active in local political organizations and has run for public office. He recently retired from Xerox after 25 years. David is a graduate of Central Connecticut State University. David, welcome. Pleasure to be here. How does trying to make a difference in New York City, where change comes very slowly as a rule, uh, compare with trying to rebuild cities in war-torn Iraq? There's some similarities. People want to have a better quality of life, and it's all about you know, civil society and, and improving it. The only real difference in Iraq is uh, I did two tours there, 2003 and 4, and I went back in 2008. And uh, after the Saddam regime, it was decades of uh, Iraqis being told what to do from Baghdad. So the challenge was how to get Iraqis to be empowered at the local level, having uh, something similar to like a community board. If anything, New York City taught me how to build civil society from the ground up, and a lot of those expertise I brought over to Iraq. So teaching Iraqis how to have elections, how to have a... Uh, prioritize public works projects, how to budget for those. I had at one time over a billion dollar budget. I had uh, a full staff that looked at development for two and a half million people. So we have to look at every aspect of making people's lives and improving it. Now you were a member of the Transportation Committee uh, before you were appointed to the board. How did that come about and maybe What's a public member? People may not uh, know that there is such a thing. There's 50 members of the community board, and there are committees such as transportation, youth and education, uh, housing, uh, seniors, and each uh, has two vacancies for public members. Now, they're not voting members in the regular uh, community board meeting, but they do vote in, in the committees. Uh, I've been a public member of the Transportation Committee for three years. What got me interested in that is, uh, you know, safety on the streets, uh, having the buses run on time, uh, having making sure we have bike share but have safe bike lanes. Uh, that's how I got involved with that. And I hope people get uh, involved in the community board, look on the website and go to some community board meetings and perhaps uh, volunteer to be public members. Now, a public member becomes a public member how? You have to go to six meetings. And after you go to six meetings, get to know the people on the committee, and it's, you're usually appointed by the chair of the committee uh, to the community board chairman, and it's approved. And uh, after going to about a year of meetings, uh, I held my hand up and said I'd volunteer to make a commitment, and uh, it's been three years of good work, and I've enjoyed it very much. Now, for somebody who's interested in serving on a community board, um, if they just fill out an application and send it to the borough president with no prior experience or dealing with the community board or familiarity with the community board, they have less of a chance, I would guess, than somebody who serves as a public member. And There's only 50 members, and you want to make sure that you get individuals on the community board that have good skills when facilitating meetings, understanding the issues in the community, be able, be able to get consensus and work with people that would not ordinarily get along or work together. Uh, so I would recommend being a public member for a year seeing how uh, you like it, picking uh, the issues that are important to you and make an impact on that as a public member. And then from there, I, you can make educated decisions on who you should have on the community board. The community is very fragile, and we need to have activists that understand the issues so we have a better quality of life, and that's what it's all about. And we do have public members who are simply interested in parks or right. something else, and they serve as public members, but they don't have the time or the inclination to apply for appointment. That's right. That's right. So it, it's an opportunity that the public uh, uh, should know about. Aside from transportation, um, do you serve on other committees? I do. I serve on the Youth and Education Committee. And I chose that because for over 15 years, I've been a volunteer for an after-school program for children called the Knickerbocker Grays. It's actually the oldest after-school activity in the country founded in 1881. The ages are for boys and girls 5 to 15, and they actually drill in the Park Avenue Armory on 68th Street. When the Conservancy took over the Armory, that's when I really started to get involved in politics in the community board meeting, because I wanted to make sure that, one, that the Conservancy took over the Armory and fixed it up, and they've done a great job, and two, that the kids get to stay in the Armory. It's very important that we not just fix up the buildings in the community and landmark them, but also preserve the institutions that make the character 
of, uh, of the Upper East Side. And Knickerbocker Grays for 130 years have done great, uh, great work in building Sounds fascinating. Leaders. I wish we had more time to learn about it. Is it a, a quasi-military uh, no, affiliated it, program? It, you mentioned drilling. Yeah, it, it has military traditions. Uh, it was found, founded by mothers uh, in 1881, and a lot of the first instructors of the, of the children were veterans from the Civil War. And there's always been a commandant, a military person in charge of, of the Corps, and they call it a Corps, like at West Point, it's a Corps of Cadets. And it has some military traditions, but they focus on history, mm -hmm. uh, civil service. Uh, the cadets do the color guards, a lot of the patriotic societies here in New York City. We've got to do a show on that uh, sometime in the future. It sounds fascinating. Um, you told a reporter back in, in 2013 when you were running for the state assembly that your civil affairs work at the Army gave you a good perspective on long-term strategic planning for a community. Uh, how do we apply that? How would you apply that to this uh, well, it, it's, very, it's very important to understand the issues. And if I was to make some similarities between Iraq and here in the Upper East Side, what we need is we have to make sure that we have safe streets. People are concerned about uh, the bike lanes. Uh, I'm a supporter of the bike lanes and bikes, mm -hmm. city bike, but we have to make sure that people know how to use the bike safely and adhere to traffic laws. Uh, also, housing. You know, as we get to the completion of the 2nd Avenue subway, we're going to have seniors that are, need, that are going to need affordable housing. So my concern is the, as the market rate goes up and rents go up, how are we going to think long term over the next 20 years to make sure that seniors get to stay in their homes? We have an elderly population uh, and it's getting older and older, so we have to make sure that the city is safe for seniors and senior friendly. That's another subject that we have to go into more because there's going to be displacement as uh, buildings are assembled old five-story walk-ups along 2nd Avenue are assembled into development sites, right. they're going to come down. And the people who live there are going to be moved out either gently or aggressively and are going to need alternatives if they want to continue to live in their community. What else haven't I asked you that, that might um, uh, indicate some of your interest in, in um, you know, in serving on the community board and, and active, being active in the community? I really learned a lot being a public member of the community board, and I really realized, and I've worked on political campaigns, I was a president of a political club, but the most important grassroots level is the community board. You have people who have lived in the community a long time. They understand the neighborhood, the character of the neighborhood. They understand the needs for the seniors uh, and for children. Uh, as we have an influx of more people moving into the city, how are we going to accommodate more seats for children in school? and make sure that we have a middle school and the high schools uh, to follow those uh, kids as they get older. Uh, basically, the community board is, is the heart and soul that makes the city run. We're the advisory uh, to the government officials and the city to make sure that we have a good quality of life. Education committee, you serve on it. Well, it's a very important committee. Uh, you know, since I volunteer twice a week with this after-school program for kids, I really have an understanding of what parents are concerned about. Uh, they want to have more choices. Uh, some want charter schools. We need to invest more in our public education system. Uh, parents need more choices. Uh, it's, 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 it's shocking to me that when kids go to even to uh, pre-K, it's an audition process. And I, it, we have to have more options for parents and feel comfortable where they send their kids and have more cost-effective uh, alternatives for them. This has been great. Thank you so much for uh, making time for us and, and coming in to, to talk about community board service. David, it's a pleasure to be here. Hope to come back. Wonderful. Our next new board member interview is with Glenn Pandolfino. Uh, Glenn is a New York City public school teacher and a union delegate at the High School for Environmental Studies on the West Side. He went to college at the University of Sydney in Australia. Uh, and there's a story there that we just don't have time to go into, but it's... it's uh, quite an adventure uh, for a young person, uh, where he took a master's in international affairs and economics. Um, closer to home, he's working on a master's in education at the College of Staten Island. Glenn teaches social studies, advanced placement courses such as macroeconomics, and has a particular interest in working with at-risk students. At his school, he is active in a number of professional development teams, as well as its crisis intervention and school safety teams. Glenn, when did you uh, first become aware that there was such a thing as a community board? One of my mom's friends was very active when we were kids, and I had heard about community board a lot. And I was always interested in hearing what she had to say about it. So recently in the last year, um, I started going to some meetings, transportation and whatnot. 
Um, just wanted to see what was going on in the neighborhood, learn a little bit about it. And a colleague of mine suggested that maybe I should apply. So this year I decided to apply, not knowing whether or not I'd get in this time, but just for the experience of applying. So I went through the application process, which was pretty interesting. And here I am now. You had an individual interview at the borough president's office? Uh, yes. I, uh, well, there was the online application, and then there was a group interview, which was pretty interesting. Um, they put us in all kinds of different scenarios. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I met with my councilman, uh, Ben Kalos. I had an interview with him. And then uh, I found out a little while later that I was accepted, and I was pretty happy about that. Gave me a, you know, it's going to give me a real chance to really help my community really become a part of the Upper East Side. For viewers who are interested, half of the community board members are appointed directly by the borough president. The other half are appointed by the borough president on the recommendation of one of the two city council members who we have, which is Dan Garodnik and Ben Kalos in our particular uh, area. Was, was there any particular issue? You're a teacher. Was education something that... Uh, um... Well, that's one of the issues that I'm interested in. I'm interested in seeing... Um, services expanded for people. That's one of the things that got me interested in being involved with seniors. Um, I'm interested in seeing that the quality of education is upward, not downward, um, that there's availability for all. Um, I'm interested in a lot of different issues. I'm trying to learn as much as possible, being that I'm new to all of this. Mm -hmm. The at-risk student uh, caught my, my eye because that's uh, they're the most challenging. And, yeah, and, uh, well, I, uh, I always hold spots in my AP class for the at risk. Um, I think that given a chance, they'll flourish. I think if they're pushed a little bit, I think that it's a matter of pride for them. Um, over the years, I've worked with different children one-to-one uh, -one, um, in group settings and whatnot. Um, one in particular comes back and he's, he tutors for me. Mm -hmm. He's a junior in college. He comes back to, and he's actually with me this summer. I'm teaching summer school classes. So he comes in twice a week to work with the kids one-to-one -one and in group settings with them. So it's really nice. I have a lot of students that actually come back and help. So it, that, there's never a need for uh, me to find tutors and extra help. And they say that one adult takes an interest in a kid. It can make the difference. I worked on Wall Street before I became a teacher. Um, it was nice, it was interesting, it was an education in itself, but teaching, it's, there's magic in a classroom, there really is. I, f I never have a bad day. Uh, even a bad day is a good day. You learn every day. Um, the kids keep you young and vibrant, mm -hmm. keep you very passionate, keep you on your toes. It's, it's a really interesting job and you know, I, I, I just love everything that I do, everything about teaching. What other committees do you uh, serve on? Um, I joined small business. Um, I joined seniors, health and social services. And I, I guess I should join youth and education. Um, I've been to a couple of meetings, and I will be joining that as well. You know, I found that, that uh, I was on too many committees, and my attendance record suffered, and the borough president's office basically said, you know, you're better off on fewer committees because we can all attend other committee uh, meetings that we don't have as we're not particularly members of those committees but we can attend and by the way the public should know that all of our committee meetings are open to the public yeah I deal all day long with youth and education um, I want to be I want to have an impact on how how education and policy is in, in the neighborhood that I live as well as in you know at my school and I am involved in various commu uh, committees at my school at the school level but um, what really interests me is really working with older people mm -hmm. and making sure that they're aware of all the social services that are available to them. So it gives me kind of to both ends of the spectrum, working with the young and working with older people. So that's what I hope to achieve ultimately. Are there any specific goals that you've targeted for this first uh, term if, on the community board? I'd like to learn as much as I can about the process. Um, I'm hoping to get involved as much as possible as needed. Um, ultimately, I'd like to see that our schools are well-funded, that our schools are using more and more technology, that our schools have the seats, and that there is choice available to parents. Um, I also want to see that our older population 
know about all the services that are available to them. Um, I think that's one of the issues is that many don't know. So I'm hoping that I'll, I'll be involved with that. Um, I'd, also, I'd, I'd also like to advocate a little bit for small business, especially when you see that it, it's been diminishing you know, over the years in communities. And I think that it gives variety and it really gives you, uh, you know, I, I remember growing up in Brooklyn, how nice it was to know all the local shopkeepers. And I mm -hmm. think that that's something really important. I think that's something that still exists on the Upper East Side. I know my dry cleaner very well. He doesn't ask me my name and I don't have to take my ticket with me. And I really like that sense of community and I really want to keep that. That's really important to me. I think I mentioned that you were a union delegate. What does that involve? I, I've been the union chapter leader at my school for about four years. Um, basically, I'm the voice of the teachers. How many uh, teachers do you represent? Uh, about 60 teachers and other staff members, uh, occupational therapists, psychologists, social, social workers, just basically to maintain that the contract, just to make sure that the contract is maintained between the UFT and the DOE. And I'm very lucky that I work very well with the administration at my school. It's very collaborative. Well, from the, the, the larger resume that I saw, all of the, the teams that you're involved with at your school, um, obviously you, you're, um, you're a people person. Um, I try to be, well, especially it's, being it's, a teacher. It's pretty clear. <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah, the teams at my school are teachers and the administrators working together to basically try and, you know, uh, make the school work better try and get, engage the students, engage the parents, keep everything, you know, make sure that all the, do, the Department of Education uh, mandates and that we're meeting, at, you know, all the criteria. Trying to make sure that we meet all the needs of our students. It's very important. Your um, appointment began April 1st. Yes. Uh, what's been your experience so far? Do you have impressions that you want to share? Or? Everything's been great. I'm learning a lot. It's a lot to take in. Um, meetings are interesting. I really enjoy listening to the public members, the uh, public come in and talk. I'm learning a lot. And I feel like the first few months are really me being a student more than anything else, just kind of feeling my way through it. And I'm hoping to, at some point, be involved more and get more vocal and get more active. That's what my hopes are. Your interest in safety and, and, and in public safety, uh, have you ever attended a precinct council meeting? No, I haven't yet. It, the 19th precinct, which covers the same district as the community board, uh, meets on the first uh, Monday of each month, not in um, July and August. But it's, a, it's worth attending, and the public is welcome. It's as open as community board meetings. Okay, so, so you know that so might be something that I should do, and that at least might be once. yeah. Well, you know the meet good, the bosses as yeah, they call them. The good thing might be that I'd be able to bring some information back to even my school safety meeting about that. You know that that I would get from a meeting like you know a meeting. Well, uh, welcome to our community board. Thanks for uh, having you're, me, you're, and I'm really excited to be a member and to be a part. I really feel, having done this, I really feel more so you know a member of the community, and it's been a great experience so far. Oh, well, thank you. You bring a lot to the table. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming I try. in today. Thank you very much for having me. Our third new board member interview is with Zoe Markowitz, a young woman who brings a very special perspective to our work on behalf of the quarter million New Yorkers in Community Board 8. Uh, Zoe is an honor student at the Eleanor Roosevelt High School on East 76th Street. As a result of city council and state legislative action, she and other 16 and 17 year olds became eligible this year for uh, appointment to community boards. Um, Zoe's a delegate to the Model United Nations. She's a volunteer working with seniors at a nationally known nonprofit group. Um, she takes pre-college courses at Parsons on Saturdays. In the summer, she's an intern with Senator Chuck Schumer. Uh, she founded a program at her school, Students for Sensible Gun Laws, to help victims of gun violence and to lobby for more effective gun control laws. Okay, so uh, <laughs> most older New Yorkers don't know what a community board is. I didn't know until I was in my 30s. Um, and few know the names of their local elected representatives. How did you learn about th this whole world? Well, I didn't know about it until this school year when my principal sent out an email to all of the students at school explaining that new legislation was passed to allow 16 and 17 year olds to serve. So I looked into what he sent us and I looked it up and saw that I was in Community Board 8. And I went to an interest meeting with Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer 
and there were a few other kids from my school that went and I thought it was really interesting. We did um, an exercise, a problem solving exercise, yeah. which really drew me to the community board because problem solving is what we do in our community. And yeah, so I'm very happy that I've joined. Everyone's been very welcoming. So you're the only student in your school, obviously. We only yeah. have two uh, um, under 21 year old, uh, well, I'm not sure what the age normally would be, but I guess it's 18. So we have two members uh, who are below that, that age. Yeah. Um, there, are, there are other 16-year-olds um, on other boards, though. On other boards, yeah. Why did you want to become a community board member? Well, I've always been interested in public service and government, and I just thought that the community board was a great way to get started with that. And local government is just a great way to see if I would like to take this as a career path and um, I'm just all the people on the board are so interested in the community they're so passionate and those are the kinds of people that I want to be surrounded by so meeting these people and just getting involved with the community and seeing if I want to further this or if I decide I don't it would still be a great experience and I'll always remember the things I learned so that's why I joined. You're going to be a junior. Yes. So you've got uh, another at least year or so before you know whether you're going to be applying outside of New York to college or, or here. If if um, if you remain in the city, at I don't think so. Columbia. So, so we might have two years of service and then you're going to go on to. Uh, well, I could always uh, come back. Absolutely. <laughs> can have a little break. Members have come on and 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 go, and going on to. Uh, um, just a four-year break, and I'll be back. You're working uh, on uh, for the, our senator Schumer this summer, yeah, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, I started at the end of June, and it was a little overwhelming at first, but I'm really enjoying it, and I'm working with casework in the office and answering the phones, and everyone's so nice there. Just how everyone's so nice on the community board, and all the other interns are great, and there's other high school students, so. I can be with them too, and it's great. Was that a, a, also an interview process where you had to apply and? and uh, yeah, there's an application, and there for me there was a phone interview. Some people might have in-person interviews, but that's the process that I went through. I don't know what you're going to be doing next summer. You probably don't know either. But the the DA's office also has an internship program in New York. I yeah. understand it's pretty good. I would be definitely interested in that. I want to continue with this sort of thing. Um, I just, I don't know. I haven't yeah. thought about next summer yet. Just, you know, make a note of it. Side yeah, Nance is a district attorney for this uh, county. Um, now, it's only been a few months that you've been on the board, but do you have uh, any impressions that, um, that you'd like to share? And any thoughts about well, this, this work? I think I already touched on it a little bit, but just I was very, very nervous going to my first meeting and to the orientation, but, um, and I thought because of my age, people would kind of look down on me and not respect me, but it's really been the opposite. So I have a great impression so far of all the people on the board and everyone just has the community's best interest at heart. So I think that's great and um, yeah. I'm just, I'm enjoying it, and the meetings are interesting, and like Glenn said, um, when the public comes, I learn a lot about issues that I wouldn't know about, because maybe I live on 82nd, and maybe there's something going on on 78th Street mm -hmm. that I don't know, because I don't walk that way, so you become aware of issues. And with a quarter of a million people, that, I mean, that's a small city, mm -hmm. and a, a good number of those are young people, so yeah. I mean, you have a... a a constituency who's who you can speak for better than any of the older members of the board who have to go and talk to the kids ask them, you know, what, what, what do you think about this uh, yeah. so you, you you bring something to the table that wasn't there before I hope I can I want to speak on behalf of kids I know and similar the city bike the whole city bike thing I know a lot of my friends who feel certain ways towards that issue so I have the youth brings a different perspective to it. 
What committees uh, um, interest you the most? I don't know if you've made final decisions about where you want to serve, but you've, you've probably selected some already. Well, I'm really interested in the Youth and Education Committee, obviously, because I am the youth, but um, also the, the um, Health, Seniors, and Social Services Committee. I'm very interested in, especially because of my work with Derote, which is the organization that aims to bridge the age gap between seniors and the youth in their community. And I think because of my work there, then I could bring something to that committee. It's interesting that you and Glenn and David also all have a, uh, an interest in working with young people and with seniors. Yeah. Well, right. I think that's a big interest. But also with the, um, the Seniors Social Services Committee and Health Committee, there's obviously other people that are represented as well. We do have a, <clears throat> a, a, a pretty large uh, older population on the Upper East Side. So um, things like uh, uh, accessibility uh, for wheelchairs, uh, for uh, transportation, um, for businesses are, are, are important. Um, I was curious about the model United Nations. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've heard of it, but I don't know anything about it. And you've been a delegate for several years now. Yeah, well, I started in ninth grade and I'm going to be in 11th grade next year. So. Um, it's just like it's supposed to mock the United Nations, basically, and um, each student gets a partner. And um, well, it depends on what conference you're in, but that's the, how it worked when I did it. And you get assigned a country, so I was assigned Belgium, and then you also get assigned a committee, so I was Women and Development. And you have to speak on behalf of your country in everything that you address. So if you um, disagree with your country, it doesn't matter. You have to speak from their point of view. So you work with the other countries in the room to come up with resolutions and to solve issues that are going on throughout the whole world. So you've got to learn about the country. Yeah, you do. Like You get assigned your country a couple weeks before, or maybe a couple months before the conference, and then you do research and get prepared. And this summer you're taking courses on Saturdays. I don't know how you find time well, for all actually, this work. Well, not this summer, but no. I do that during the school year. Oh, I see. Yeah, this summer is already booked. It's very popular, but um, yeah, I do that during the school year. And I've done one fashion course and two um, fine arts courses. At Parsons? Yes. Is that a particular interest of yours? Yeah, I love art. I, I don't know if I would like to pursue it but or go to college for it, but it's something that I love and it's a hobby that I've always done. And I just want to continue my classes at Parsons and see where it goes. That's great. All I can say is thank you for taking time. <laughs> thank you for having thank me. Thank you so much. <laughs>